two new battery shelves I have made and I am moving the batteries to uh, the front part of the, the boat. Uh, not right up in the bow section but uh, just past the balance point. Um, I found there was too much weight in the back and it was driving the uh, stern down. Uh, plus that's kind of where I'm So currently I have my battery banks in the under the very back seat which is probably a bad idea in hindsight because uh, the total weight of all these batteries uh, weighs about 260 pounds and uh, I am getting a performance issue with the back end of the boat um, sinking a little bit low and uh, so I am now in the process of moving the battery banks forward to the front third of the boat which is uh, if you have the, the plans uh, right in front of bulkhead number three I have this shelf already in place and also on the port side I have this similar one for the lead acid batteries so I'm going to start moving the uh, batteries forward. So I have the uh, main battery bank moved into the forward hold and it was a tight fit. Uh, at least to get the battery bank, the battery boxes on uh, the shelf I had made. But uh, I think in the long run I think this is uh, going to be a much better solution. I have the uh, house batteries now moved uh, in front of the third bulkhead. Uh, this is on the port side. So one battery bank on each I have side. lots of space now back in the rear uh, seat area. This is where the battery boxes used to be. So with the battery banks moved, uh, the uh, back end sits higher uh, where it should sit. Uh, the motor is now perpendicular after um, modifying the motor stand that I have there for the Torquedo motor. Um, it has a four degree uh, slant in it and uh, we'll see how that performs. So I've taken the boat out of the river after two weeks and I can't believe the scum build up on it. The river is really mucky right down by my dock so pretty bad. Uh, anyways it tells me exactly where the water line is uh, for future painting. Um, but I have to do a modification at the back here and uh, what I need to add are these wedges that's what the Aussies call them they're uh, they go on their racing cats and I have it modified so they will go on one there And one here and that will uh, help the flow of uh, water um, coming off the end of the hull and uh, supposedly give it better lift and and hopefully that will help with my uh, steering my steering is very sensitive the other thing I have to do is make what uh, Ron Mueller calls a fairing which is uh, it will be a directional piece of triangular shaped wood and fiberglass that will help part the water from hitting um, is hitting the motor uh, there's a lot of turbulence so the the, the flow of uh, the turbulence from the hulls hits the motor and uh, just comes right on up and, and producing a lot of drag uh, so this uh, fairing uh, should take care of that problem so what I've made here is 
a lightweight frame with the door skin on the one side and uh, I've equated it with epoxy just to seal it, sanded it, it's ready for varnishing. I have to do a little bit of uh, filling along the edges. So I've cut two triangular like pieces. This is to build the fairing. So what I did with my two triangular pieces of the fairing, I clamped them together. I put them onto the belt sander just to uh, make sure that both pieces were exactly the same. And I've now drilled holes about every six inches. I'm just uh, guessing where uh, we'll need some tie wraps and I started putting tie wraps on. So I didn't need all the tie wraps that uh, I'd planned for. Um, I've got uh, a few key ones and it's held uh, the fairing pieces together quite nicely. So this is the, this is probably too much of an angle. It'll probably be more like this. So I have a little brace in here and uh, temporarily screwed into place just uh, use this for a dry fit and everything seems to fit uh, fine and I put a bead of epoxy resin mixed with uh, some filler uh, right down the uh, center of the fairing that should glue it together solidly I have uh, braces clamped on the side to keep everything straight and so when that hardens, uh, I'll re remove the braces, uh, the center brace as well, and um, sand it lightly and glass it. I've now turned the fairing over and added a bead of epoxy filler uh, along the edge. And that will be sanded later and then uh, last. With all the clamps off, it's looking not too bad. To sand that next. And I have the wedges epoxied on and clamped into place. And when that dries, I will uh, add a little bit of filler as a bead. And then I'll be glassing them or at least glassing the outside. So I have my final solar panel. It's a 200 watt panel and uh, it will be used for charging the house batteries, which is currently a 12 volt setup of lead acid batteries. From the inside, it's a finished uh, door skin panel that uh, is the same as that I use on the canopy. And um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be putting on this yet. I think I might have my granddaughter uh, do a mural on it of some sort. She's a very good artist. So here's my little solar controller that I use for that single 200 watt panel. And uh, on this uh, overcast cloudy day, and it looks like rain clouds are coming in um, right now. It is, draw, it is uh, producing 0.6 amps and 13.5 volts right now is uh, being produced going to the batteries. So I've added cleats at the front and also at the back and I have the guy wires now strung down uh, to the front cleats. Uh, at the back, very similar, I have uh, brought the wires down to these cleats and now, my panel, here's the hinging uh, that I have. So it's a double hinge, this side, and then you can see the hinge through there on the other side. So it'll go both ways. So I could push this out and be able to latch it for whatever angle I, I need. And then I could close it up. I could have it in the closed position by bending this, lifting it up. I could lift it over the cleat 
and now I can lift it over the cleat and now swing it up to the ceiling, latch it in place. So I have the fairing uh, temporarily bolted in place and uh, seems to have come out okay. Uh, next step uh, will be to this prime should divert uh, the flow of water away from the motor where it was just piling up against the uh, shaft of the motor. Um, that's the intent of this. I have the wedges all uh, completed. I have to prime, I have to sand it, prime it and paint it uh, next. And this should provide me with uh, better steering and better lift. I have attached small bolt latches uh, to uh, hold auxiliary solar panel up uh, when I'm traveling or when I'm not using it and uh, if I want to use it just disconnect the bolts and it'll swing down and I can swing it out to whatever position I want. The fairing is all mounted. The motor's in place. Next will be to test it out. I'm back in the water again. This time I'm testing out the modifications I did by adding the fairing in front of the motor and the wedges on the back of the uh, extensions of the hull. And uh, definitely the steering is better. It has improved a lot. Um, Performance-wise, it seems to be about the same. I think at uh, with the five horsepower, you get up to 10 kilometers an hour. And uh, <clears throat> the next step is to try it. Is trying to to plane, and uh, just not enough power to to plane. Uh, so I would need. I believe minimum 10 horsepower to uh, get this up to a plane. Uh, anyways, I'm going to do a test trip uh, from Napanee to Deserano and back. If the weather holds, if uh, it looks like there's going to be thunderstorms, which uh, they might be predicting that for this afternoon, I better turn around and head back. I'm not going to get much solar performance today uh, with this overcast, but uh, anyways. We'll see how it goes, and just a quick look down. So you can see the turbulence is uh, is not bad now.